The Philippines is one of the most Catholic countries in the world. But some Filipinos now believe that traditional teachings on contraception are condemning millions to a life of poverty. And a radical plan to provide free birth control is challenging the power of the church as never before. It's not the business of the government to be promoting contraceptive devices. We are here to celebrate and defend life. Are you with me? What is the alternative? You know, should I keep quiet? But with neither side willing to back down, who will win this increasingly bitter battle between the president and the pulpit? Lunch in Tondo, one of the largest slums in Manila. For 42-year-old Clarissa Canayon, finding each meal is a struggle. Large families are common here. Clarissa and her husband Danilo have 10 children, the youngest of whom is baby Daniela. The family home is this one-bedroom shack with no electricity. Danilo is rarely able to find work, so the family live a hand-to-mouth existence. Often we have nothing to eat, and when my kids are sick, we have to pawn whatever we have. That's why half of our stuff is always pawned. To help out, Clarissa's children work here. In the slums, many children have to skip school to scavenge rubbish dumps for anything they can sell. It's a grinding cycle of poverty from which the young have little chance of escape. It hurts because my kids really want to go to school. But since my husband can't find a job, I have to ask them to stay at home and find work. It pains me, but what can I do? Sometimes it comes to a point where my husband and I fight discussing the kids' future. We don't have enough money for all of them to finish their studies. Like the majority of people in the Philippines, Clarissa and her family are devout Catholics. Contraception is legal, but most people here have been brought up to believe that using it is a sin. But now Clarissa, like many others, has begun to think the unthinkable. I used to believe in the church's teachings about having lots of children, but now I really think we should have family planning. But contraception is out of the reach of many. Condoms are readily available, but one packet costs more than families like this have to live on for a week. The government believes that something has to change if the country's to advance. So it's proposed legislation to provide free birth control and family planning advice to anybody who wants it. In this society, where conservative Christian values have long held sway, the reproductive health bill has caused an unholy row between politicians and priests. The Catholic Church remains incredibly powerful here in the Philippines. Abortion is illegal, and this is now the only country in the world where Catholics still can't divorce. So President Aquino's plan to introduce free contraception has put him on a collision course with the church. <laughs> itong mga gagamiting birth control devices. 
More than 80% of the population are Catholic, and the church has put its full weight behind efforts to prevent Parliament passing the bill. As we strongly reject the RHB. Bishop Teodoro Bacani says the government is acting in defiance of the nation's wishes. When it comes to the Philippines, here the majority even are Catholics. No? And here the government will promote and fund as essential medicine. Can you imagine that? As essential medicine, means of birth control, which are uh, against uh, the teaching of the church, and we believe against the natural law, against the will of God. It's not the business of the government to be promoting contraceptive devices. It will be like, uh, say, the government will pass a law which will uh, fund the promotion of pork eating among the Muslims. Now, can you imagine what an uproar there would be among the Muslim population? Celebrate Jesus, The church has mustered a huge publicity campaign and mass protest rallies to try and influence legislators to oppose the bill. It's a tactic that's worked before. This is the sixth time a bill like this has been put forward. Each previous version has been seen off by the church without it even coming to a vote. We have an egg, we have a sperm, they meet together. And then we have a fertilized egg or a zygote. Is that fertilized egg already a human being? This time, reformers are more hopeful because the government has made the bill one of its main priorities. Those who are proposing the legislation say that ultimately they're fighting for the rights of Philippine women. The most controversial part of our bill simply says no Filipino should be denied information and access to family planning. That's all that it says. And yet in this benighted country, as if you were living in the Middle Ages, that is considered her her heresy. Why is there so much opposition to information? We just want the poor Filipino woman to know what are the ways of family planning. If she wants to reject all of them, that's fine. There's no compulsion. Every single day, 11 mothers die from pregnancy and childbirth complications. This means that every year, some three to 5,000 Filipinas die simply because they did not know about reproductive health methods or, or were not we did not have access to facilities. Much of the debate, both inside and outside Parliament, has centered on the question of exactly when life begins. This is the core message of the church's campaign against the bill. It equates contraception with abortion, which is illegal under the Philippine Constitution. Our main objection to it is this, that uh, the, according to the bill, the government is going to fund and to promote the distribution as essential medicine of uh, contraceptive devices. Uh, many of which are, in fact, abortion-causing. So in your view, are contraceptives like the IUD, like the pill, exactly the same as abortion? Yes. There is absolutely no direct connection between contraception on the one hand and abortion on the other hand. Contraception means the use of a barrier so that the egg and the sperm will never meet. If they never meet, you can never get pregnant, you can never have fertilization. The church says it's not opposed to family planning, but it says the answer is what it calls natural contraception, such as the rhythm method and abstinence from sex. My own proposal is, is this, and this will be very effective, I'm sure. Just tell the Filipino people, you know, we need you to be responsible parents. And responsible parenthood means planning your families.
And planning your families means that you should try to bring into this world those children and only those children whom you can raise up in a human and Christian way. If uh, the church and the government and the NGOs all deliver that, you, that unified message, you will see that there will not be these problems of uh, uh, the poor even, uh, you know, reproducing much more. It has absolutely no relation to reality. These bishops have not been married. They don't realize what the sexual urges are capable of doing. And to claim exclusivity or a monopoly of knowledge is always a dangerous situation. Almost a third of the Philippine population live on less than a dollar a day, according to government figures. And supporters of the Reproductive Health Bill say its success is a vital step in reducing these numbers living in poverty. So what do you think the consequences would be for the country if the bill doesn't pass? First, will be the joke of the international community. In addition, the Philippines will sound very much like it's still in the dark ages. Do you think the Philippines is out of step with the rest of the world? Uh, yes, I think uh, we are different from the rest of the world and happily we are. The Philippines has the highest birth rate in Southeast Asia, and its health system is struggling to cope. Supporters of the bill say you just need to come to places like this to see why it's so urgently needed. There are often two or even three mothers to every bed here in this maternity ward. Because there are so many patients, for example, in two beds, there are five to six mothers, so they are just sitting, they just lie down alternately, the other one will sit, the other one will lie down. At first there were only two of us, but now I have to share the bed with another two women. 36-year-old Rosalita cradles her ninth child, Rita May. Rosalita is a practicing Catholic, but she's daunted by what lies ahead. No, I don't have enough money to take care of my nine kids. What is life like for you with, with so many children? I feel happy, but I know it's going to be hard. How many children, if you had chosen, ideally, would you have liked to have? I only wanted four kids. Meals, like everything else here, are basic. But it's still much better than any care that these new mothers received before they were admitted here. Okay, some plane. Many of them won't have been able to see a doctor at all before giving birth. You see women dying because they don't have prenatal checkup. They don't even know that their blood pressure is high. Ako? Ako. Si? Si Benigno Aquino III. For the president of the Philippines, Benigno Aquino, it's a national disgrace that this situation exists. He's the first president to publicly endorse the reproductive health bill. So I keep saying, we're, this is not a fight against the church. This is um, an attempt to address the situation that exists where there are two and a half million being born, where you have 40% of the population that never get to see a health professional, where you have um, easily 20% of the population living below the poverty line, where there's 140,000 or so classrooms that are uh, needed, uh, and, and I can go on and on. Let me say this. So many of the people of USA will be needing birth control. They all have cell phones. 
and they spend more on cell phones than they would spend <laughs> in pills. Though the debate over family planning is deeply polarised, those who are advocating free contraception say they don't see it as a stepping stone to even more radical reform. Do you think the Philippines will ever allow abortion? I don't think so, not in my lifetime at least, because there's a very, very strong uh, prejudice against the taking of life within Philippine culture, especially of an unborn child. But although abortion is illegal and likely to remain so, many hundreds of women each year take huge risks to end unwanted pregnancies. This woman almost died after buying a drink from a market on the promise that it would make her miscarry. We've concealed her identity at her request. I'm a Catholic, but not practicing. That's why I was able to do something that was against God's law. But soon after drinking the potion, things started to go very wrong. When I got home, I'd lost lots of blood. We got all the blankets and towels to stop the blood, but it didn't help. So my mother took me to hospital. We went to two hospitals that didn't want to admit me. At the third hospital, I passed out, and they took me in and operated on me and got the fetus out. In this country, abortion is illegal, and you were taking a big risk to do it. Were you aware of that risk? It was a really hard decision to do that. At the time, I was being battered by my husband. My children were as well. I didn't want another child to go through that. After her ordeal, a charity provided her with contraception, which otherwise she couldn't have afforded. But it meant continuing to disobey the church's teachings. I don't believe what the church says about family planning. Contraception really helps us, and if I didn't use it, I would have 16 children by now. Even though abortion is illegal, there are some extraordinary contradictions in Philippine attitudes. We're right outside one of the main churches in Manila, and these vendors are selling religious icons, but they're also very openly selling homemade concoctions to end pregnancies. The name Pampa Regla literally means to menstruate, and the label says it helps women who haven't had their period for one to two months. It claims to cure what it euphemistically calls delay, but it's clearly being marketed as something to terminate pregnancies. What is that? Herbal. Herbal? What does it do? Herbal. What's it for? It says, um... Oh, yes. is, this, is this for women? Yes, ma'am. Is this for women uh, to, yes. to stop pregnancy? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Isn't that dangerous? No, ma'am. No side effect. Soon we were joined by the boss of the operation. <laughs> what, is what is it made from? From herbal. From herbal. Roots of the tree. Russia. Is that dangerous? No. No side effect. No side effect. So it's just made from herbs and it's yeah. for yeah. women yeah. Yeah. To, to stop pregnancy. Yeah. Yes. And you're sure it's safe? Yeah. Yes. But the woman soon decides to change her story. It's really an anti ulcer medicine, she insists. And when I press her, she comes up with an unusual sales pitch. I tested it. I have, an, I have four kids, and then I have an expected pregnancy. I use it, but it doesn't work. It came out like... <laughs> but it, it is a little bit strange, wouldn't you say, the fact that you're selling these things and your neighbours are selling these things. 
right outside a church. No. But concoctions like this are illegal. These posters warn people of the tough penalties for selling them. It has to be of concern that women with unwanted pregnancies are resorting to unregulated black market products that at best are ineffectual and at worst may kill them. Less than 100 metres away from the stall, the faithful are at prayer. It's one more of the idiosyncrasies surrounding this debate. Another is the fact that the church has an unusual ally in its attempts to deliver a knockout blow to the reproductive health bill. Manny Pacquiao is arguably the most famous and most loved Filipino in the world, an international boxing champion eight times over. He's used his sporting success to win election to Congress, and now he's thrown his weight behind the church's campaign. If we believe in God, we should follow what he tells us. There are laws being passed in Congress, like the Reproductive Health Bill, which in my view are against the will of God. But the church's publicity coup backfired when shortly after Pacquiao had made the comments, his wife Jinky revealed that she'd been using the pill herself after their fourth baby because she didn't want any more children. It's not clear what the result of all this lobbying will be. After all, both sides have been here many times before and there's been no definite result. Why do you think, then, that five times this bill has been put forward and five times it's not ever really succeeded? Why is that? Because of the fear of the so-called Catholic vote. It has never been proved in any election that there is such a thing as a Catholic vote. And yet this bogey that does not exist, this ghost, still continues to haunt every single member of the Philippine Congress. They're always afraid that in the next election, if they vote for the reproductive health bill, they might lose. If the bill is passed, the church has no intention of that being an end to the matter. It intends to challenge the verdict in the Philippine Supreme Court, and the bishops insist it's the politicians not Catholic values, that are holding the country back. The greater cause of uh, poverty in the Philippines is really corruption, number one. <laughs> Secondly, <laughs> misgovernance, no? the lack of good governance. Our population problem is not that there are too many Filipinos, but that uh, they are maldistributed. Second, that the wealth has not been distributed well. As the nation grapples with questions of belief and conscience, who will back down first? The church or the state? How far are you prepared to push it? What is the alternative? Should I keep quiet? And the Catholic faith is uh, the faith that I belong to. And I'm, you know, we are taught that at the end of when you're called, before the Almighty, you will be asked, what have you done to the least of my brethren? I cannot go up in good conscience say, we were happy to let the status quo be as it is and simply ignore the problem. That I think would be criminal, that would be against the oath that I subscribe to, and that would be even against the teachings of the church that I belong to. <laughs> Back in Tondo, and today Clarissa can just about afford to send some of her children to school for the afternoon. But it won't be long before their education is interrupted again to help earn money for the family to survive. It's a hard life, and one which Clarissa hopes her children won't have to endure forever. Meanwhile, the church's sermons have begun to grate. Well, I would ask the priests, are you going to help us if we have this many children? Are you going to help feed our family? Are you going to help bring them to school? 
they should realize we are the ones having these sort of problems and taking care of our kids. So maybe this is the right time for this to happen.